Hello and good morning. Um, welcome to, this is a four to five focus, your 11 o'clock four to five focus. Um, I usually catch a few regulars at this hour, so I hope to see some of the people who are becoming my virtual friends and students. <laughs> begin by introducing myself and I invite you also if you'd like if you are watching please to uh, share write a comment and tell me your name tell me where you're from uh, participate in the conversation in any way you you want I tried to pick one that's a little different today hope something that's very interesting to me hopefully you like it too and have something you can say about it um, but first I'll introduce myself. My name is Seth, I'm Seth Knight. Um, right now I'm in Milan. Uh, I'm a teacher at um, one of the Maya schools that's right in the center of the city. We call it Milano Meravigli. Um, I am 37 years old. And hi Vincenzo, nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. A very studious looking photo. <laughs> Nice, nice picture of you. <laughs> um, I'm 37. I'm from the United States. Um, I'm from Ohio, Cleveland, near Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I've been in, in Italy, in Milan, for about three and a half, over, actually, over three and a half years. I'm very happy here, and I don't want to leave. <laughs> um, our lesson today, I'm going to put this up because it helps introduce me and also the lesson. So our lesson is called Visiting an Art Gallery. At university, I studied music. Uh, I, I'm a pipe organ player, a pipe organist. The pipe organ is that the, the instrument sort of like a piano that you see in churches, big, big, huge instrument. Um, so I really, really love art and music. And so I thought this could be a nice thing to talk about, visiting an art gallery. Um, some interesting vocabulary today and maybe a chance for us to share with each other some of our favorite museums or um, architectural works. Um, Italy is full of art. Um, Europe is full of art. So if you have a favorite painting or even song, even music. Uh, if you want to share anything with us, feel free to let us know. What do you love? What art do you love and why? And I might even be able, I think that I will be able even to share some art. So if you tell me the name of something you like, I can share it with everyone watching. So, uh, okay, so what are we doing today? Um, so when we think about visiting an art gallery, usually when we're walking through a gallery with our friends, we give our opinions. We talk about what we see. Oh, I like this because, oh, look, look at the painting. This part's very beautiful, right? So we, we talk about what we like and what we don't like. Uh, using simple past to talk about galleries that uh, we visited before. And art in general, some nice words, nice vocabulary here. Um, ah, Pasquale, very nice. Um, I know I from Amalfi, uh, the Amalfi Coast. I two summers ago, yeah, two summers ago, I spent one week in Amalfi, in the town of Amalfi, up above. I think it was called Pagerola. This little, I think in Italian you call it the frazione, called Pagerola. Was above Amalfi. It was. We, we had a little house that looked over the sea. It was fantastic. For me, I was dying. <laughs> it was beautiful. And of course, from Amalfi, we took a boat to Capri um, and also to, is it? I get very confused in Italian with there are some cities that for me, the names of these cities are too similar. Salerno. Salento, Saronno, they're all the same. Salento, Saronno, Sal there's Salento, I think, too. No, for me, I confuse all of them. <laughs> but I know that in 
Amalfi below Pompeii there. Is that Veneto? I don't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get very confused with all of these cities. <laughs> but welcome, Pasquale, from Amalfi Coast. <laughs> also, Elena. Hello, Elena from Sardinia in Cagliari. Ah, Cagliari. I've been to Cagliari three summers. So two summers ago, I was in Amalfi, <laughs> where Pasquale is from. And three summers ago, I was in um, Villa Simius. So I think like the part, southern part of, of Sardinia. Beautiful. What is the food I ate? Sayadas and... There's one thing we ate. I don't remember the name. Oh, Kulur, Kulur Jones. And then there was this cheese with honey that was fantastic. The food in Sardinia is really special. Um, hello, Elenia from Florence. I also know Florence. Ah, you can help us with the lesson about an art gallery because you have a, uh, what, Uffizi. So art everywhere in that city, goodness. Florence is the city of art for sure. Thank you, Pasquale. Forgive me, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's begin this. So first we have some, just some questions about, ah, uh, yeah, see <laughs> news. Um, and then I ask, Kulur Jones, do you like? Of course I do. It's wonderful. <laughs> the food in Sicily is, everything is really good. I remember in the morning, every morning we had um, like a pastry, like a, not a, like a biscuit, a cookie, but it was something very typical from Sardinia that, that was wonderful. Um, all the food I ate was, was really good in Sardinia really nice and then what do they call the little it's not it's like a pasta but there's there's small little um uh little little balls i can't remember what they're called but they're really yummy this little round little round balls i had this with um with um angole, with like clams it was really nice food everywhere you guys know that we don't need to talk about that Let's move on to these questions. So, um, some general questions um, about, about art. So please feel free to answer, answer the questions that you see on the screen. Share your answer, share your, share your, your opinions about these questions. All right, there we go. I'm making a little banner for us so you guys can see it. There you go. So our questions are, do you like art? Do you prefer modern or traditional art? And how often do you visit art galleries? Um, you can answer any of these questions and please feel free to give some, some more information, you know, so you can add to the end of each question, why? Do you like art? Why? Do you prefer modern or traditional art? Why do you have a favorite painter or a favorite artist? Um, and how often do you visit galleries and why? Um, so for me, do I like art? I like art a lot. I especially like um, architecture. Uh, I love art as well. I like art museums. But I find that when I am planning maybe a little weekend outside of Milan, so a, um, a city break, if I want to go um, just for the weekend to another city, um, I often choose a city that has maybe a famous building. So maybe the Duomo or some, um, you know, building that's very beautiful. Often these buildings are also art galleries, but I especially like to see the architecture of, of a place, of a city. One of my favorite little towns to visit near Milan, because I live in Milan, is um, I really love, um, there's a, a lot of little towns I really like, but I really enjoy visiting Bergamo. Bergamo is really pretty up high, um, the high, the high city or the, you know, the, uh, the high city. Um, 
But also one of the cities I thought was so, so pretty is um, Mantova. Mantova is a really pretty city. Um, buildings are very, especially right in the center, the old historic part of the city. The buildings are really, really beautiful. Um, Pascali says I quite like art. Pascali also says I prefer traditional art, yeah. And Ilenia says, yes, I do. I prefer modern art because the traditional art is for me quite sad and dark. Sometimes I would, I mean, I like, I, I think it's probably also you, Ilenia, Pasquale, everything is wonderful. Everything can be beautiful. But for preferences, um, I usually like, um, like impressionism, which is not very old. I think the colors can be really beautiful, but I also like Ilenia. Do enjoy modern art because I think it's for us today. Modern art, I believe, uh, it speaks to us more easily. We can understand it because uh, the images. Art is art is a message, you know. Art is trying to communicate a message, and sometimes in very old art there's so much time you know between between um, a, a, a medieval a medieval painting which is beautiful i love it but you know it's maybe this painting is 800 years old culture time is so different i appreciate that it's beautiful i appreciate the skill uh, the ability of the artist, but sometimes the message can be very difficult for me today in in 2020, in the year 2020, to understand very old art it can be difficult. It's beautiful, but um, modern art can be easier for us to understand, even though it can be very strange. <laughs> Um, Elenia says, usually I visit art galleries only once or twice a year. Elena says uh, that she also prefers to visit a city for architecture. Yeah. Do you guys have favorite, um, favorites, favorite towns, favorite villages or cities to visit? I was saying Bergamo and Mantova. I love Venice. I think Venice is amazing. It's so special, Venice. Also Rome. Um, but some other cities that I've really enjoyed are um, Parma. Parma is quite nice. Genova. Oh, I like everywhere. <laughs> I like everywhere. Trieste. I really enjoyed Trieste. It's a really pretty city. It's very nice. If I think of art galleries, um, for me, I feel it's important when I go to an art gallery. Um, <clears throat> before I go to an art gallery, I like to read, or it, maybe not a lot, but I like to prepare myself for the visit. Because sometimes to go to an, an art gallery, if I do not know the art, it can be so much, yeah? For example, um, last year, I went to Amsterdam. I went to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And um, in Amsterdam, there's a very famous museum called the Rijksmuseum. It's a big, the big, the main museum of the main art museum of Amsterdam, the Rijksmuseum. And it's, the building is also very beautiful. The building itself is a beautiful piece of architecture. Um, but the art inside is all, um, we call it Flemish, Flemish art. So Fle uh, Flanders, I think you guys, it's the Fiamingo, this region of Europe, Flanders, Flemish art. And um, I don't know much about this art. So I, when I was in the museum, I don't understand the art. And I love art. But for me, I appreciate the art more when I understand why the art is important. So, um, so I prefer this. Another museum I re visited recently was in Brescia, 
in Brescia, there is um, a very, very big complex of museums. It's called the Santa Giulia, La Galleria Santa Giulia, or something like this. It's a monastery, so it's a church, but also under the church are Roman, um, Roman ruins um, and also an art gallery. It's, there's many, many layers of, of time and history and art. And um, that museum, before I went to Brescia, I read about the museum. And so I, I understood why the art was important. And I, that museum was beautiful. I was there with my partner for many hours. We were, it was raining, it was a yucky day. <laughs> it was a, outside was very gross. But we spent a lot of time in this gallery. I also liked the gallery because um, there were many sections and once and and many buildings and so i don't know there was a lot of change so first we were in a medieval monastery which was also a gallery so it had one feeling then we moved to an old a building that was a renaissance building and the art was different but it felt there was a nice progression to the to the visit <laughs> um, we also have Domenico. Domenico, I think I recognize your photo. I remember you. <laughs> Elena says, I prefer walking around the cities, discovering beautiful places and landscapes. I like this too. In general, I like this as well. Like I said, if I want to visit a museum, I prefer to go inside. I prefer to, to understand the museum. Um, I really like, for me, the museums I really enjoy I think because this history for me is very fascinating, is Roman, the very old history. I love the Roman things. When I go to Rome, I go crazy. My goodness, I spent two weeks in Rome a few summers ago and every day in, in Rome, there are a million museums and inside of the, um, the Terme, in front of uh, Terme, in front of the station, there's the, what is it, the Terme di Ocraziani? I don't remember what they're called. Those, uh, Le Terme, uh, and it's a huge museum. And I spent hours, <laughs> I was there for so long. I was in it all day, I loved them. <laughs> okay, um, so how often do I visit? Here in Milan, in, in Lombardy, I'm in Lombardy, I'm in Lombardy right now, and I have a special uh, card, um, and it is a subscription to many, many, many museums in Lombardy, and especially in Milan, there are many. So I go to museums, I would say every month, probably at least one museum. But I also go to the theater, I love the theater a lot, so. Um, I really like art. <laughs> I'm, maybe I'm missing art in this period when I'm always at home. All right, thank you guys for your comments. Please keep sending them. And now we get on to a little bit of vocabulary. So feel free to begin if you want to start uh, sending, uh, sending some of the answers, okay? So here we have some really specific words to talk about art, um, types of art, but also we will say media. So the way the art is made. Um, I'll read these words for you. And if you guys want to start sending the answers, but also telling me what in, in, in regards to these words, do you like these types of art? So first I'll read these, these styles. Impressionist art, Still life, sculpture, renaissance, abstract, landscape, portrait, and surrealist art. Surrealist art. All right. So if you guys want to start sending those answers. Also, if you want to answer some of these questions, so which of these types of these different art styles which do you like and which don't you like? If you have any questions about what these words mean, you can also ask those questions, okay? I'll give you guys a minute. 
I'm in my kitchen right now, and my partner has come in. He's hungry. He's looking for food. He's trying to be very quiet. <laughs> what do you want to eat? Snacks. <laughs> All right. I'll start matching a bit. So let's look first at a, I think we can see that easily this is a modern style, right? So abstract, and it's quite abstract similar to Italian. I like this painting. I would like to know what this painting is. I don't know what this is exactly, but so we have a boat, a large ship, and the sails are butterflies. It's quite funny. So here, this would be surrealist, surrealism. Oops, we have some people who've answered. Let's see. Uh, hello, Paolo. Ah, I recognize Paolo. Hello, from Modena. Rome is an open air museum. It absolutely is. <laughs> absolutely. Nice expression, an open air museum. Many cities in Italy, Venice would be also, Pompeii, yeah. Uh, but Venice, I would also say, is like an open air museum. Maybe even Florence, in many ways, has areas that are like a museum. Uh, Domenico says, I usually visit galleries, galleries, plural. I usually visit galleries five times a year. I like impressionist. Okay, continuing here. So we have abstract art, surrealist art. I think Dali is the very the quintessential, the most famous, important surrealist. Here we have a picture of a person. So when we have the just the face, we call this a portrait, a portrait. Portrait we might also use if we take um, a photo, but when it's sort of a, a formal photo, when it's a photo, like, you know, if you're with your friends and you take a selfie, a selfie is probably not a portrait. Um, a portrait's a more formal. If you're taking a photo to use on a website, you know, a professional sort of picture of yourself, a portrait. Here we have, when I was young, I did not like this style. I did not understand it. But as I become older, I like this style quite a lot. I think it reveals a lot about culture. This is what we call in English a still life. Still means frozen. I am being still. Still life. So life that is not moving. Um, I think in Italian, don't you call this natura morta? So in English, we call it still life. So life that is, it's like, like I take a picture of how my life is right now. All right, next. The style here, this would be, I think, yeah, this is Renaissance art, usually very detailed, very, where the technique of painting making things look very um, symbolic, but also um, detailed, uh, it's quite important. So Renaissance painting. So Florence, who is it that's in Florence? Irenia, are you in, I don't remember who was in, I think, yeah, Irenia was in Florence. So a Renaissance city, <laughs> lots of Renaissance art there. Okay, next, very famous painting here. Right, this is, in English, we call this painting Starry Night. Starry Night. Painting, Van Gogh, right? Famous, famous, famous. Uh, next, okay, so this looks sort of like a big spider. Oof, I don't like spiders. Looks also, I see in the background the building, this is Bilbao, this is the Guggenheim in Spain. And so when we have uh, the, the in in the Uffizi in in Florence is there's the we call it the David <laughs> big statue so a sculpture sculpture so three dimensional and finally 
a painting of 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 what we see right so not all necessarily nature but of a what we call it landscape so of a of what we can see right of a large area nice job you guys started sending some of sending some answers paulo says i don't understand the difference the difference between these between those styles but i like art if it says something to me, if it says something to me. I think in general, I approach art this way, Paolo. If I, if I like something, because there's so much art, right? And I think each piece of art is like a message from the artist, right? So the artist has an idea and they give us their message. And of course, some messages I like, some messages are not as interesting, I don't like. It's normal, I think. I think you're right. Well, I have a good friend in the United States. She is an art teacher. And so, of course, she loves art museums and she goes very often. And when I am with her, when we visit together a, an, a museum, uh, usually, because there's so much art and everything is beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> everything can be wonderful. So usually sometimes we walk in, we look around the room, around the specific gallery, and she chooses one painting that speaks to her very quickly. So the picture that, that attracts her and we go look at this painting. And then I do the same, I say, so she says, I like that one. And I say, I like that one. And we look at just two paintings and then we continue. <laughs> Next gallery, because there's so much art to look at. There's so much art. Nice. Um, what is, for you guys, do you remember, those of you watching, do you remember the last gallery that you visited? What was the last museum that you visited? I think for me, I have to think here. Um, so, oh gosh, it's been a while. In Milan, I went to, uh, I went to a Lego exhibition, sort of modern art, I guess. It was really fun, though. I was with, a, with my friend's daughter. <laughs> um, I was in Parma in January, but we didn't visit any museum. We went to the opera, we went to the Teatro Reggio. The, um, January, February, oh, it's been a long time since I was in a museum. I need to go to a museum. I have seen that some museums, if you want to make a virtual visit, <laughs> some of the very famous museums, during this coronavirus quarantine have made uh, some very beautiful websites. If you go to the website of the Louvre in Paris or Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, the National Galleries in the United States or in London, um, some of these very big, important world museums, um, you can visit, you can make a virtual visit of these museums. It's not the same, of course, as being in the museum, but at least you can have some culture. <laughs> the Rix Museum in Amsterdam in particular, their website is very, it's a very good website. They, you actually, in on, on your screen, you walk in the museum and you can look at each picture. Very. Um, it's a very well designed website. Very, very beautiful. So you can give it a look if you like. All right. Let's move on past uh, past these. Ooh. Nice. Paolo visited the Uffizi. I've never been to the Uffizi. Never. I've been to Florence, but when I was there, I did not go to the Uffizi. I wanted to see the buildings. My first visit to Florence, I visited Santa Maria Novella and the Duomo, uh, Santa Maria dei Fiori. 
visited the uh, the Palazzo Palazzo Vecchio. I visited the architecture of the city. <laughs> I need to go back to see the Uffizi. And then Elenia says, my last museum was MoMA in New York. Ooh, nice. A famous museum. Cool museum, too. Oh, you know, I visited the Guggenheim in Venice about a year ago. It was cool, too. Nice museum. Um, ah, nice. Domenico says he likes the Egyptian Museum in Turin. I want to visit this. And from Milan, I'm in Milan. So Milan to Turin is quite easy. Yeah, it's one hour in the train. I think finally when we can go outside, I can go to spend a weekend in Turin, visit the Egyptian Museum, eat some, is it fasona? <laughs> eat some yummy food. <laughs> and uh, Turin has good food. Piemonte has nice food. <laughs> and visit the Egyptian Museum. We all need some culture after two months at home, I think. <laughs> cool. Okay. So now, I'm going to keep going. Uh, so just some here, some simple, you guys already writing some sentences similar to this, but talking about our favorites. So what's your favorite kind of art? Who's your favorite artist? You guys have already been writing some of these sentences. So you're doing well, doing well with this. I really like, I prefer, right? Nice, nice. I like this painting. I think it's pretty. It's very interesting. But I don't know who painted it. But it's a pretty, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty picture. Paolo's, uh, oh, from, this from Firenze, from Florence. I remember so much the Madonna con Bambino, <laughs> lots and lots. In Milan, there is the museum, the diocesan, uh, no, it's the Ambrosiano, I think it's called. It's the, uh, a, a museum of religious art. And it's a beautiful museum, uh, but it's similar where each room, you know, so you have one gallery, Maria col Bambino. 100 times. The next room, the nativity, natività, 100. Next room, John the Baptist with no head. <laughs> next room, you know, I was like, oh my goodness, it's so many of the same thing. Beautiful paintings, but a lot of repetition. <laughs> All right. Here are a few more words. This is a nice activity for you guys at home to do. So can you match uh, match the opposites? Okay, match the opposites. And if you want, you can write these things, okay? So first I'll read them for you. You guys can start typing away, typing at home. So matching the opposites, colorful, Natural, nice, traditional, happy, interesting, modern, dull, boring, linear, sad, horrible. All right, matching some of these words. Again, if you want to, you guys, if you want to type the opposites, or if there are words that you don't understand, you can also ask me, you know, Seth, what's What's this word? Because there's there's one one word in excuse me one word in particular that is usually a little usually a new word here. All right. So first we have colorful. If I look at this picture, I wouldn't say that this is colorful. It was, there's a lot of blue, very blue, blue and and then the yellow. Not necessarily colorful. The opposite of colorful is going to be the word dull. So dull, um, maybe another another opposite of dull might be vibrant. So colorful, you know, there's lots lots of things, lots to look at. Um, whereas dull is going to be colors that are uh, like sort of grays, not vibrant. Doll is more subdued, more. Um, th this picture here of the Van Gogh, I wouldn't say is doll because the yellow is quite vibrant. Um, 
but so so doll has the idea that the colors are just quite like not they don't jump at you yeah um colorful doll good words to describe things uh <laughs> Paolo says it's not easy that's okay that's why you're here you're learning ah Elenius is natural with linear yeah, because a natural thing is going to be quite flowing. Even again, if we look at this uh, Van Gogh, it is quite the 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 shapes are sort of natural shapes, whereas linear is going to be. If you know the artist is, uh, is it Mondrian, I think I have the right name. The so linear, like lines, right? Nice, nice is sort of a generic word. Uh, nice, horrible. Maybe with art, we use words like it's beautiful, it's uh, nice, is sort of just, oh yeah, it's good, it's horrible, very bad. <laughs> you guys are starting to give me all the answers. Thank you. Okay. Traditional, Domenico and Elenia have given me the correct answer, traditional and modern. Sometimes with art, we also use the word old. Old in English is not always negative. Right. So if, um, you know, if, if we talk about, for example, at Uffizi, a lot of the art at Uffizi is old. It's not negative. It's just referring to the age. Right. Um, Rome. Rome is an old city. It's OK to say this in English. Old is not a it's not a negative word. If I say, you know, you are old, that's not so nice. It's not. It's not kind. It's not polite. But it's okay to say something is old. Um, like in Milan. Milan is a Milan is an old city, but it also has very. It's also a modern city. Um, Italy. Many parts of Italy are very old. Uh, Venice is an old city. Um, it's okay to to use the word old. Uh, okay, you guys have matched up everything. Yeah, happy, sad, and then interesting. And boring. Interesting and boring. Some people find museums to be very, very boring. I don't usually. The, actually, museums that I find boring, sometimes um, like historical museums that are about history can be boring to me. Um, I, I like very old history. So like Roman history, I think is very interesting. Renaissance history, I think is interesting. But more, we say, might say contemporary history, I don't find interesting. For example, I tried reading a book about the Risorgimento in Italy, the Italian Risorgimento. I just find it, I just think it's boring. <laughs> it's not interesting to me. Um, I think I, I prefer I prefer very I prefer old history, um, more modern history. I don't think is so interesting. Um, some modern history I do. I enjoy reading about. Um, I do enjoy some, not all, but some um, World War from the from the Second World War, World War Two. That history to me can be interesting, um, but yeah, in general, modern history, I don't, especially very modern, like political history, I don't find interesting. I don't like it. It's not interesting. <laughs> All right, nice job with that, you guys. Huh. So you guys are pretty, pretty good with that. Nice job. Let's move on. Got 10 minutes left. Ah, okay. So here are some words to give to talk about where things are. This is also is also quite useful. Um, let me see if we've got a eh, okay. So this is talking about um, where things are placed, right? So here this is Botticelli, I think, right? Famous, famous painting. And so we're looking at the position of things. And here we have on the right, on the left, at the top, at the bottom, in the middle. 
So the important thing to to, to, to notice here are the prepositions. Which prepositions do we use in English? Because some of this might be different from your language. So we say on the right, on the left. Um, right, so they're a little bit different, the prepositions that we use. Um, maybe what you can do at home if you want, so using maybe this picture of Botticelli, can you, can you make some sentences to describe the painting? So what do you see on the right? What do you see on the left? What do you see at the top and at the bottom and in the middle? Right? For me, at the right, so right, yeah. At the right, I see this woman in a white dress with small blue flowers, and she is holding some sort of pink or red. Um, I think that these maybe are clothes to give to this is the, the this is Aphrodite. This is Venus, I think. You know, the birth of Venus. Isn't this the name of this painting? I've never seen it. I need to see it. But at, on the right, I see that. I see her, this woman. I know that in this painting there is so much symbolism, and I do not know the symbolism. <laughs> I don't know the symbolism of the painting. Okay, and then the opposite. On the left, I see these two, um, I think they're angels, aren't they? It looks like they have wings. One of them is blowing the wind. There are flowers falling. All right, so on the right, on the left. Uh, thank you very much. Elena says, in the middle, I see Venere on the top. Oh, here again is a little bit different. So nice to start. In the middle, I see, in English, we don't use Venere, we use Venus. I see Venus. The same word as the planet in English. I see Venus. Um, and then on top of, or on the top of, on the top of, on top of, no, just, I think just on top of, well, in the middle of the painting is Venus. Below her, nice, nice, you guys. Below her, there is a shell. Both of you guys, Elena and Elenia, nice sentences. Nice sentences. Very good. Um, all right, so at the top, the top, the top of this painting is this a, a little piece of sky, <laughs> a little piece of the sky and uh, a tree, a plant of some sort. At the bottom, we have the sea, waves. We also have, yeah, her, her feet, the shell. And yes, in the middle is a woman, <laughs> Venus with long red hair. Have you seen this painting? Do you know this painting? I'm sure Eleni, I, this, I, I think this painting is in, in, in the Uffizi, I think. You know? I'm sure probably all of you Italians have seen this painting before, I think. It's very famous, it's why well, it is very famous. Is it very big also? Is this painting very, very big? So many, you know, here we have this picture, it's like this. But often these paintings are huge. Oh. Nice job, you guys. On the right, there's a woman with long red hair. Very nice. And Domenico says, in the painting, there are two women on the right and two angels on the left. Venus is on the shell. Very nice. Nice job, you guys. Great sentences. Great sentences. I think, don't you also, Italian people at school, I think in high school, you study a lot of these paintings. In my country, we do not study this. <laughs> it's very much Italian history. <laughs> it's important for your art history. Nice job, you guys. Cool, cool. Great job. On the right, there are trees. In the middle, there is Venus. Perfect. Here we have just now talking a little bit about some of these artists. Um, I like this because the, the painting or the picture, the photo, 
these are, we call them, if you remember, we had the, this style of art where we show someone's face, it's called a portrait. And here you can see five portraits. And each portrait, these we call self portrait, a self portrait. So the artist painted him himself. A self portrait means you did it. Self portrait. We have five self portraits of these artists. Kandinsky, Turner, Dali. In English, we say Botticelli. <laughs> Botticelli and Van Gogh, or Van Gogh, depends, different people. I say Van Gogh where I'm from, but some people say Van Gogh. So we have some information about them. Um, maybe I will invite you guys at home. If you know, so you can see here that the, this is giving a small uh, biography, a little information about an artist. So like here with Dali, they have surrealist artist born in 1904, Spain, Spanish, and then they've made some things. So Dali was a surrealist artist. He was born in 1904. He was from Spain. He was Spanish. And you... Um, if you want, you can use this information about Kandinsky, Turner, Botticelli, Van Gogh. Or if you want, if you know another artist, uh, if you want to share with us information about another artist, you don't need all of this information, but some of it. Like, for example, I will share, I told you at the beginning of the lesson, I am a musician and I studied music. Um, and I am an organist. I play the pipe organ. And so for me, a very important composer, so the composer is the person who writes music, a very important organ composer is Bach. Super important. For all of music. So I will give you a little um, biography about Bach. So uh, his entire name is Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, Bach was a Baroque, a Baroque uh, musician. He was born in 1685. I told you he's important. I know all this information. <laughs> he was born in 1685. He, I don't remember where he was born. He's he was he's German. He was German. Um. But he lived for a very long time in the city of Leipzig, like Leipzig in Germany. Um, he was a very, very, very important and influential musician and composer. Um, even today, even today, people study Bach so much. He's very, very important in music. He's like fundamental to Western music. <laughs> He's very important. Um, yeah, so he was German. Um, he lived from 1685 until 1750. I know that about Bach because I love him. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, I see that it's about time for us to be finishing up. So I'm going to close this. There we go. Um, so thank, thank you, guys. You guys were very talkative today participating really, really well. And I thank you for your comments about art museums and about art and the things you like and the things you don't like and for telling me where you're from, everything. It was really nice. Um, uh, I hope you guys have a really great day and uh, probably we'll see you tomorrow or pretty soon. Thanks again and have a good lunch. I'm getting hungry. Um, yeah, I forget, no. Elena was from, yes, Elena is from Sardinia. Eat some curorjones for me, okay? And Elena, eat some Fiorentina. And Paolo, eat some balsamico, <laughs> some tortelli. <laughs> Domenico from Bari, I don't know particular food from Bari. Puglia, eat some um, orecchiette for me. <laughs> and I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Have a good day.